Hi, my name is Dishini Walsh. My research was on the low genetic variability in invasive Halophilus sapelacea seagrass in the United States Virgin Islands. My research was conducted using a collaboration with Chantal Lewis, Emily Henriquez, and our mentor, Dr. Alex Stanford. So to give you guys a bit of a background, I will continue to my introduction. So seagrasses are angiosperms sperm that provide many ecological benefits, such as providing food and shelter to a variety of marine organisms. In addition, seagrasses help with stabilizing the seafloor, maintaining the water quality, and lastly, assisting with our local economy. However, invasive species can affect an ecosystem function as well as its structure. Halophila stapelacea is native to the Red Sea and, it, and to the Indian Ocean. However, it has become an invasive species that has spread within the Caribbean. The first sighting of Halophila stapelacea within the Virgin Islands occurred in 2012 on the island of St. John, but has since then continued to expand to St. Thomas and St. Croix. Since its first sighting in 2012, little is known about its invasive mechanism. The first collection, or the initial collection for this study, occurred in 2017. However, halfway through our collection of samples, we were struck with Hurricanes Irma and Hurricane Maria, which disturbed our, sea, our seabeds and caused us to stop the collection. The objective for this study was to identify its population genetic structure of Palafala Stapelacea within the United States Virgin Islands had been altered following Hurricane Irma as well as Hurricane Maria in 2017. In addition, we wanted to identify if the genotype would correlate with the depth based on previous findings that discovered that Palafala Stapelacea has multi locus genotypes. So, to conduct this study, we established a method. Our first step for this study was to collect Halophila stapelacea plant leaves within St. Thomas. In 2017, we collected a total of 101 samples, while in 2019, we were able to collect 52 samples, in which all the samples that we collected were collected at different depths. The plant DNA was then extracted using the nucleospin kit and then purified. AALF1 restriction libraries were then established and then sequenced. We then did to be rad genotyping where we were able to sequence the libraries. Lastly, single nucleotide polymorphisms were identified and analyzed for the, clonal, the clonality using GenCon software. By using this method, we were able to identify the clonal diversity of Palafala stapelacea within the United States Virgin Islands. So on my slide, I have a table that presents the depths in which the samples were collected for the year of 2017 and the depths in which the samples were collected for the year of 2019. So, in the population genetics of Halophila stapelacea, we discovered that when we compared the samples from 2017 and the samples from 2019, there was no significant difference with a p-value of 0 0.085. We also found that there was no difference in the genetic structure of the samples collected in 2017 and 2019 from directly at different depths. Furthermore, we tested for the probability of these samples originating from, this, from distinct sexual events for which we obtained a peak sex value of 7.84 times 10 to the negative 88, thus providing us with evidence that sexual reproduction is unlikely, unlikely to have occurred within our samples and asexual reproduction is likely to have occurred within our samples. In addition, we we got a P gen value, we got P gen values which are 8.03 times 10 to the negative 7 as well as 4.13 times 10 to the 11, 10 to the negative 11, thus providing us with further evidence that it is unlikely that sexual reproduction has occurred within a sample. 
We also identified that although the samples were collected in 2017 and 2019 were in fact majority clones, we also found that some samples collected in 2019 had some individuals. So just to give you guys a brief review of everything I have covered, Palapa stabilizer is native to the Red Sea as well as Indian Ocean, but it has become an invasive species that has spread within the Caribbean. Since its first sighting in 2012, little is known about the invasive mechanism in which this species has used to expand within the United States Virgin Islands. The objective of our study was to identify if the population structure of Palapa stapelacea within the U.S. Virgin Islands had been altered following the hurricanes that occurred in 2012. In addition, we wanted to identify if the genotype would correlate with the depth based on previous finds previous find that have discovered that Halophila stapelacea has multi-locus genotypes. So to conduct this study, we performed to be ran genotyping to identify some single nucleotide polymorphisms on samples that we collected in 2017 and 2019 from Brewer's Bay St. Thomas at various depths. By using this method, we were able to identify the clonal diversity of Halophila stapelacea within the United States Virgin Islands. So, using these methods, we were able to discover that there was no difference in the genetic structure of the samples that we collected at different depths for the year of 2017 as well as 2019. We also discovered that within the invasive species, Halophila stapelacea, sexual reproduction is unlikely based on the results that we obtained for PSEC as well as PGEN. Thus, it appears that this species is using its sexual reproduction as its main invasive reproductive mechanism. So to continue with its work, we will hope to determine if in specific habitats within the Virgin Islands, there is a specific genotype that have a higher adaptability. In addition, we hope to continue by conducting a survey of all the locations in which this invasive species, Halophila stapelacea, is found within the United States Virgin Islands. Lastly, using the knowledge that we have gained through this research, we hope to establish methods that may assist us in the management of Halophila stapelacea within, well, its expansion within the United States Virgin Islands. So this research was funded from NSF as well as UBI RISE. And I would like to say special thanks to all the amazing people that have assisted me throughout this research. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, there is my email at the bottom. And feel free to email me any questions, comments, or concerns that you may have about my research. Bye.